Hey guys, how you doing today? I'm coming to talk to you about being physically fit. Now, once upon a time, you thought you had to get old. Well, you know what? You do. But, do you have to get out of shape? What is old? Hey, ah! Is old how you look? How you feel? What is old? Old is in your mind. Or is it? After a couple years of not working out, I'm beginning to wonder. Ah. 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 Yeah, kids. At 65, with a broken back. Who'd have thought? So how do we stay in shape? I don't do any supplements. I don't do any special, gee, take this pill, get in shape shit. I don't do any powders. I don't sell anything, except salvaging your body. Now, this is a matter of doing an exercise on a mat, the size of this one here you see in the mirror. That's me. Now with that, in theory, you can build up your muscles, so that you can go ahead and get your balance back. All right, you're supposed to be able to do this, but how many of us do? You're supposed to be able to keep your balance huh, and hold your muscles up and taut. I couldn't do this when I was in my 50s. Couldn't do this in my 40s. Couldn't do it in my 30s. Stretch, you wanna be able to touch your toes, I think, right? No, you wanna be able to put your head down there and touch your knees. This should be easy. Why is this so hard? I had a broken back, two and a half years old. Even now, way up here, that's an upper abdominal hernia. Okay, that was at one time big enough to stick two and a half fingers in. They said you need surgery. And I said, no, thank you. I don't do surgery. That's 15 years ago. Now, how agile are you? If you're watching the mirror, this is one of the tricks I like to do for the kids. We do a little push up. Doing the splits. I don't even know if you can see that. Ha! But the idea is the same as a push up. We go all the way out. Put your hands all the way out in front of you. And then just, yeah, there you go. And then stand up without touching anything but your hands and your feet. Party trick. Why am I showing you this? What's the purpose of this? Why? Because too many people in my age group are out of shape. Now, many of them are using all sorts of excuses. I can't get in shape. Well, you know what? It's not true. When is it too late? Well, when you give up. Otherwise, I've seen ladies 80 years old go back in shape from being oh, a little crippled, but doing yoga, stretching, CrossFit training. There's so many things you can do. I hurt the shoulder the other day. Ah, a little painful back right in there. So I went to a chiropractor. I went to an acupuncturist. Maybe 80 bucks, 100 bucks. I didn't go take a drug. Didn't go get painkillers. No. I went ahead and tried to get it fixed naturally. Why? Because I haven't taken any drugs from a prescription in my, almost my whole life. I don't take Tylenol. If I can help it, I don't, even, I don't take ibuprofen, I don't take anything. I take some vitamin C's, I take some zinc, D3. I don't wear a mask. If I can help it, I try to stay out of places. What? I just give up going to places I gotta wear a mask. Why? Because I don't plan on getting sick with some imaginary cause. And I say imaginary in this sense. Hypochondriacs get sick on their own. 
people cure themselves of cancer. It's called the placebo effect. You can cure yourself of a lot of things if you just believe it strongly enough. Have faith. Your vessel is a miraculous machine. You breathe in through your nose. And the back of your nose picks up all the little particles. If you breathe properly, it's through your nose, not through your mouth. Stupid people that don't oxygenate their brain. <sighs> breathe through their mouth. They're not taught how to breathe properly. There's also many ways of breathing. I think they're called pranayama is a good one to learn. And it's techniques on how to breathe and build up your lung capacity. Did you know you should be able to take a balloon? A one gallon balloon and fill it in one lung. Try it sometime. I always fun competition. You get a balloon, everybody has one at the table. A big one, you know, like one, one, one gallon. And you take a deep breath in. Well, you'd be surprised how many people can't inflate a balloon. That's how weak their lung capacity is. Why? They're not breathing from their belly. You're supposed to breathe like this. Exhale. Inhale. Belly first, abdominal breathing. Why? Because you want this core down here, this battery to charge up so that all these scalar waves, these chakras on the way up, so they fire up properly. You want your feet. Yeah, your feet on the ground. Barefoot or leather. Why? Because you're an electrical circuit breathing in air. Positive ions. Just like you stuck your finger in the socket. Positive. And you want to ground. Why? Because you don't want to get inflamed. You don't want to get cancer. You don't want to get all stressed out. You want to have it go to the ground. Just like a light bulb. Yeah, did you notice the light bulb doesn't work unless you ground the damn wire? That's the two sides. You can't just run power to a light bulb. You got to run to the ground. I'm a filament inside of a gelatinous shell. A bioelectrical computer that's sending signals to my spirit. And through this gelatinous shell, this filament, the more I allow it to charge up by touching the ground and my little antenna, the more I breathe. Believe it or not, the healthier I get. I didn't walk barefoot further than the bed to the bathroom until I was 54 years old. Yeah, I had a tenderfoot. I ooched and ouched and acted like a little girl walking across hot coals when I first started trying. Now I walk a mile or two a day. I come in barefoot intentionally in the morning at 40, 40 degrees, 35 degrees. Why? Because with my feet on the ground, man, I'm charging up for the new day. What's the evidence of that? Well, okay, again. Ah! What is the evidence for that? We become the evidence for that. I stay lean. Why? I don't want to eat a whole lot. Why? Because you don't have to have a lot to eat. You get used to not eating a lot. And what you eat, you eat that's good. And what you use, you use to make human. The best human you can make. Now, how many people want to make that out of a pig and look like a pig? I know, I eat some meat. Yeah. Walking barefoot in the snow. Not from very far, but yes, absolutely. It's amazing what it does to your feet, which remember, all your nerves end in your feet, your hands, and in your ears. That's why you get your acupuncture in these places. And so, if you put your feet on the ground and you allow those nerves to go ahead and exhaust all that stress and everything else, and then pick up really good negative ions, which are healthy for you, to offset all the positive ions you're breathing in, because air is not charged too much with positive ions. Yeah. So... It's possible. It's possible to get younger. What do I mean by younger? I'm not saying you'll move your birthday up. Oh, no, I'm officially born in, no, not 1955. I'm now 1930. No, no, I'm not talking about younger in that sense. Hmm, I'm talking about what matters. At 49 years old, I start making new neurons, mature neurons that operate 10 to 100 times the speed of normal juvenile neurons everybody's born with and burns out with alcohol. 10,000 a shot, remember? You only rebuild at 700 a day. 700 new mental, you know, mature neurons as you wire the frontal lobes of the brain. It doesn't start until you're 49 years old. At that point, you begin to um, see the bigger picture. Get the big screen. Not the little one you and I are looking at right now. How do I know? I'm over 49. 
At 65, I've had two seven-year cycles, which in some languages, that means two seven-year chakra cycles, which means I've actually gotten a chance to see the difference. You also get a new ganglion. Instead of having a little ganglion, the, the, the junctions, the intersections, they only have like three places to get in and out of, you now have 11 intersections at that ganglion, and now all these neurons that are traveling and passing along at 10 to 100 times the normal speed, well, guess what? Woohoo! I'm walking to the other side of the room. Um, those guys over there, well, they're really doing something. What are they doing? Well, they let you process at 10 to 100 times the speed, plus have more connections and more computers. And guess what? Every day when you make a new neural pathway, the beauty of being human, the holographic reproduction of ourself every day, that new cell, you know why DNA computers going to be the most incredible computers on the planet even with quantum computing going on all the stuff we're doing dna computers are going to be able to store incredible amounts of energy and information why because the information of each one you make when it replicates itself it replicates everything it had already and an upgrade and then you stuff in a bunch of new information and neural pathways and charge it up and it makes it and replicates itself the next night you have 700 more of them that are equal to the computers you had the night before or better all connected by Oh my goodness, ganglion with 11 connections. In other words, I'm creating mass computers, AI, advanced intelligence in old age, much as to my chagrin when I was younger, I swore you couldn't do that. Only young people can get smarter. And then you just get stupid as you age. That's what I was taught. Yeah. I was taught a lot of things that weren't true. Now, I understand why Socrates had to take poison. Because they said, you got to quit talking. And he said, I can't quit talking. Well, then you got to go ahead and go to prison. I uh, ain't going to prison. Not without a whole bunch of people getting pissed off. I'll make some of a rage. And they said, well, in that case, Socrates, you got to take some of this here hemlock. You, you just have a snack here. Sit down on your little couch. Have a snack. Shut up. We don't want to hear your shit no more. Thank you, Nikki. Um... If I rate higher, I am absolutely focused on that and teaching that it's possible to transform a rickety old body that had a broken back, that had to use a heat lamp for 15 minutes, three cycles every morning just to get out of bed and walk straight. That was me at 54 years old. I was getting old. I believed I was going to get old. So I was going to get old. Sure you are. If you believe that, it's like a placebo. But guess what? I didn't have to get old. And I read about the Tibetans, and I read about them going off in the mountains and fasting and, and coming back 30, 40 years younger looking. Now, that's youthing. It's called youthing, but are you really getting younger? Well, technically you are. It's a chronographic thing. If your telomeres are growing again instead of shrinking, which is the end of your little your, your chromosomes, and that's the spot. If you, if you chop the end of it off, you get a lot of problems. So you got to keep those telomeres longer and healthy. How do you do that? Well, it isn't sitting in the city with a bunch of stress and smog and eating like shit. By the way, this is water, but I love steins. Um, I was born in Germany, and I love steins. And somebody asked the other day, oh, he must be an alcoholic because he's drinking. No, I'm not drinking alcohol, folks. I don't know if you can see this. But anyway, just for your own concerns. I had alcoholics for parents. I pulled my first shotgun on an alcoholic at 15 years old. He was pulling my mom out of the house by the neck. Drunk as hell. In the Dr. Jekyll mode of his two personas. No, I don't like alcohol. And we don't tolerate alcoholics, practicing alcoholics, in Salvage, Texas, by the way. Not that there's that many people here, because when you start taking out practicing speed freaks and practicing drug addicts and practicing antidepressant freaks that won't give it up and anti oh my god depressants it's just anyway so many people are addicted my mother was addicted to many drugs that were given to her by the doctors and she thought marijuana was a horrible thing now people i want to tell you something right now as we're going into these hard times <sighs> health how can i say this if you have to have those drugs every month and you have to go to the doctor who makes sure that his office is packed, you can't sell an empty office for any money. So you got to make sure you're selling prescriptions. You got to come back, be checked, make sure you're still good, get your new prescription, go back home. And if for some reason that doesn't happen, I had it happen to my employees one time. He was on a painkiller. Doctor went on vacation for two weeks, didn't leave him a script. So he actually forged his own script because he was desperate. 
his wife and two kids went back to Mexico and he basically had to go and hide and work undercover because he was arrested and had to possibly go to prison because of that. Some people need these things, but if you get addicted to them, here's the issue. And I said this the other day, what happens if the people you depend upon suddenly dart out on you, die? Close their doors. Oh, the pharmacy's not open. Where's the other one? Five miles away. How are you going to get there? Uh-oh. Guess what? If you come off Prozac, if you come off most of these meds right now, the people are taking 50 to 60% of the population is on antidepressants to try to keep their cool during these hard times instead of getting healthy. Burn those stress chemicals out of your body. Exercise. Walk. Now, Trinity's got a bad meniscus. She was supposed to have a new mechanical knee put in and didn't have it. She grounds. She puts mud on it. And she clocked 250,000 steps this month for one month. Mind you, that's more than me. Mind over matter, yes. I, I'm a very big believer of mind over matter, but that doesn't stop a bullet coming at your forehead. you got to move. And that doesn't take fear, because then you get paralyzed. That takes having the good sense to get out of the way. Like a semi-truck coming down the highway. I'm not afraid of semi-trucks. Are you afraid of a semi-truck if it's sitting there in the parking lot? I bet you're not. Now, if you're in the middle of the highway and you just got your foot stuck in a trap and there's a semi-truck coming down the highway at 80 miles an hour and that guy ain't paying attention, he's got his headphones on, he's, got his, he's doing his texting and you can't get out of the way. Now, are you afraid of semi-trucks? There's a time and place for everything. Now, would it pay you to go ahead and get freaked out and so scared you get paralyzed and don't do anything? Or would all of a sudden you go, hey, wait a minute, my shoe's stuck. Get the hell out of the shoe and duck and go. If you get paralyzed with fear, you don't think about getting your foot out of the shoe before that guy gets there. Prepare. Now, I got a whole bunch of people out there out here in the world. They're sitting there getting fat, dumb, and happy while they're waiting for some next coronavirus regulation to go ahead and say, oh, you're allowed to go out now and buy snacks. Or you can go out now and take one of your four masks off. By the way, on your phone, there is an oxygen meter that checks your oxygenation. And you better be clocking 94, 96, 98 most of the time. If you're clocking in the 80s because you put that mask on and you watch that oxygen rate drop down, that's the same as if you have a problem at night. Sleep apnea. Where you're not breathing good through your nose and you stop breathing right and all of a sudden your oxygen levels go down really low. And that causes um, Alzheimer's and all sorts of mental disorders because you're burning up brain cells while you're not breathing oxygen. Oxygen. What I was just explaining to you, you got to learn how to breathe right through your nose. Intentional. Now, if you got a broken nose, you got problems up there, you need to get them fixed. I know, it's expensive, but guess what? <clears throat> what would you pay for a brain? If you don't fix it, you're going to get old and not be able to do that. See these eyeballs? Once upon a time, these were got to be about worthless. This one saw it triple in one eye and double in the other eye and I think 2400, 2600, something like that in my vision. So in other words, when I took my glasses off, what you saw at 1500 feet, I had to be at 20 feet to see. And then I got to see three of them. If I was looking at the moon, I had three moons overlaying each other. Now, thanks to the wonderful success and I'm not talking doctors down at all. They put new lenses in these little eyes in 20 minutes, and I can see wonderful. One I see is real good far away. One I guess he's real good close up, like I can see you now. And together, again, like I always say, two eyes together. All of us eyes. The we. Now we can do wonders. If all of us get together, I don't know much about the Kratom. I've heard some good things about it. And, and there's lots of different things that people can do, mind you. But not in excess. Pot smoking for the cannabinoid complex is great. It helps on pain relief for veterans. It's PTSD. It helps for deprogramming and brainwashing. God, there's so many benefits, natural things out there have to offer. Uh, I think Kratom's still legal. It's still um, allowed everywhere. It's not illegal. You can grow it. Um, but there's also so many other things that are natural. And we're finding out. I'm learning. I'm, I'm an old guy learning this stuff at a late age. Um, what I want to bring to you is this body wasn't like this. Seven years. Seven years. You, brought, you, you grow all... Let me zoom. Uh, sorry about that. Um, no, what I'm trying to get a point to you is that if you go ahead right now and you get your, your vessel, your body, in order, honor thy vessel. First command in any scripture you want to go to. Why? Because what are you going to do without this? And if it's not connected, and if this isn't connected, the pineal gland, great lessons electromagnetic radiation, electromagnetic frequencies, 
if you put your head next to the wall where the electric wiring is every night, you put your head in the electrical field, your pineal gland is going to stay in the electrical field, you won't be able to produce. I'm going kind of fast, aren't I? The pineal gland allows your body to produce melatonin at night that reduces the inflammation, allows you to heal, allows you to dream and sleep deep, which then allows you to concentrate the next day, keep your balance, and having healed at night, not necessarily wake up inflamed and in agony the next day. Learning how to eat for some people on a ketosis diet where you don't eat all the time, just stuff yourself. You go ahead and narrow it down to six hours a day and you'll shed pounds and you can still eat what you want. But ideally, you want to get to as much organic and not take artificial sweeteners and that kind of garbage in all the time. White sugars, white flowers. And I speak from, a, you're, you're looking at a guy who was a sugar freak as a child. What's a sugar freak mean? That's when you buy a box of sugar cubes and eat them out of the whole thing cheapest candy you can buy is sugar cubes um going into the restaurants and taking the days of them when you had bags of sugar on the table and i had to go steal six or eight bags of sugar as i cruised through the cafeteria and then go outside and tear the bags off and pour the sugar down my mouth and it went on for a long time in the army i was a squad leader so i got to go to the px and so i went and bought m m's peanuts for one pocket and m m's regular for the other pocket and i would take off with a quarter pound of M&M's in the morning for the for the runs and I would have that extra energy huh. cheap speed but it also causes depression it causes you to deplete all your chromium out of your body it causes you to deplete the magnesium out of your body and magnesium is a big factor on not being depressed and you can only take so many magnesium supplements you need to eat things that have magnesium in it but you got to do that because if your brain doesn't have magnesium you will get depressed and sugar is the fastest way to depression and at 25 years old, working in a health club, eating a Burger King double Whopper every night, I realize, because of having narcolepsy and other symptoms, mm -hmm, thanks to a girl who gave me a book called Sugar Blues, which I highly recommend everybody read. I think it's Linda Goodman or something like that wrote it. 40 Symptoms. I abused my body so much as a child that only by the grace of God do I sit here today with these lessons to try to tell you about because I suffered from them. My narcolepsy was so bad I was taking flying lessons in college and kept falling out of the sky from 5,000 feet to 800 before I came conscious again. It was about the sixth time and I was freaking out thinking I needed to land in a field or something. And I finally was able to stay awake at 5,000 feet but I forgot to change tanks. And then I left one tank full on my little trainer on my solo flight across Florida and got back too close to the airport and realized I had one tank full, one wing full of fuel and the other one almost empty. And if you do that and land like that, when you get to a certain speed, what happens is you're so heavy that your plane will go like this, one wheel will grab, you'll turn around and just flip the plane down the runway. <clears throat> impressive to watch, but I hear it's not so impressive to experience. And I was scared to shit. And it was my last solo flight in college, learning how to be a private pilot. So I go on thinking I'd get my commercial pilot's license and someday be an airport manager. And then I found out the next semester that I had to have good eyes to be a commercial pilot. And I didn't. So also, I didn't get my license for other reasons, but I did get back to that airport that day. By the grace of God, I made it back there. I learned how to crab. I paid attention to my instructor. So when I landed, you land the plane sideways. So that way, when it grabs, it straightens it out. And I managed to get to get in and get out and get down the ground and on my knees, kiss the ground and thank God my angels were there. Now, what's the point of this? Oh, I was probably 25, not even that, 23 years old. Eating sugar, had no clue. Going to school 50 hours a week, working in a job and going to school full time. And full time for me meant 17 to 21 credits a term. I was kind of an overdoer. I had a 3.66 average because that made it an A. I didn't need a four point. I'm not a perfectionist. I'm a perfunctionist. You need an A average. In my family, you got in trouble at home. But for me, I was paying for it. It was all my ticket. My dad wasn't around. Mom wasn't around. My, my veterans benefits actually were paying for it. My job. But the point was this. I didn't give any idea, no attention to my body, my vessel. 
Young kids, please. I see kids all the time to come here. You know what? I have a lot of fun because Adam would have been 25 when he died. He passed away at 24, just about 25. So I really have um, all these kids out here to go ahead and test myself again to see if I would have been able to, you know what I mean, stay ahead of my son. Well, luckily, then I'm proud to say, they ain't no kids do my tricks. Most of them, I've had them do two do the splits, maybe do the uh, bend over, kiss your knees with your legs straight, some of those things. Not too many do the fingertip trick push up where you stand up just holding your fingertips on the ground, your toes. Nothing's allowed to touch but your hands and your toes. You start with your fingertips and your toes. Then you're allowed to go to your palms and work your way and stand up. That's just a party trick. You'd be amazed how many people can't do those Chinese push ups on their fingertips, but once you can, now you get into that I can do anything you can do better game that's the one you pull out of your hat this used to work remember that when you go I can do anything you can do better oh, somebody did that to me and it took me a long time to learn how to do that what's this all about well I thought I'd be checked out by now in my, my youth we didn't get to be 65 years old in my family and look like anything other than you're still here <laughs> you look like you should be gone already and I'm looking at all my contemporaries, and that's what I'm seeing. I'm seeing men being led around by their wives like they're puppy dogs because their brain is Swiss cheese because they're taking statins, which don't allow them to get any high-density lymphoid fat into their brain, which is what our brain is made out of. High-density lymphoid fat. Not muscle in your brain. It's fat. But it happens to be good for making circuits and stuff and having nerves inside of it and all that kind of good stuff. You ought to think about that before you take statins and have your head be Swiss cheese instead because you don't have <laughs> materials to build with. When you get that chance to finally build those neurons, what do we do? We give you some drugs to make sure you don't do that. Because we love you so much, Big Pharma. We love you. Yes, and I want everybody to know when this fantasy, because of course I would never say anything bad about Big Pharma because they might want to get me off here, and I wouldn't say that, would I? If it sounded bad, how about it wasn't bad? It just sounded bad. But of course, the other thing is, always remember, when anybody says anything, this is a fantasy. You can see, look at this. I'm, standing, I'm in the middle of a forest. There's a tree back there with a house in it. This is a fantasy. I'm talking as a writer about a phantasmical world. Salvage, Texas. Not even on the maps. That's how much of a fantasy it is. It's got swimming holes and caves and mysterious ships up on tops of the hill. And You know what? Fantasy is your imagination. So I wanted to be a writer when I was a kid. If you go online and you look at The Prelude for Wibblery and Wub by Brad Cattell. That's what it was when I was a kid. And it's a story of Darby and how Darby wanted to go ahead and find out the meaning of his life. And he was pretty depressed and pretty hurt and pretty painful. And so he decided to just kill himself. Suicide. Go to the other side and find out. There must be an answer someplace. Surely it's got to be on the other side, right? And this is sad because right now i got veterans 22 a day commit suicide thinking there's an answer on the other side. In that little video, you'll find out when he went to the other side to get there, he didn't quite get there. Or he didn't get where he thought he was going to go. Now, on a religious basis, it's not a story about a religion. It's a story in metaphor. There's no cult to join. There's no religion. It's a story about a boy that gets a mission to come back to the planet with a little set of words like a virus. To one day plant in the world and let everybody know that there's a world union of beings out there that want peace, that do want to be together, that do want to communicate, that want to have a narrative, not, not the one we're getting necessarily, so we can compare it with dialogue, dialogue, communication, synchronization of the communication of all the people and the beings living on the planet, the dogs, the cats, and everything we're going to have to take care of. Communication is essential. Now, we got a lot of languages. It's tough to try to communicate on this country now, as let alone in the world. So, the idea behind this is you only have a small set of words. It's 18 to 20 words. But what it does is it gives you a viral 
element. And there was something that spread around the world easily and quickly. It's only three letters to start with. It's WUB, W-U-B, which means a world union of beings. But it also means this energy of soul that you call by all different names, depending on your religion. Some call it prana. Some call it spirit, source. There's a lot of names for this energy of soul that fires us called God thought. Those who deny it, well, they can deny it. I denied it when I was young. I didn't believe there was a God. Give me proof, monkey mind. Give me evidence. Give me testing. Well, it's there, guy. It's there. We've tested everything you can test. We've got, we've got monitors and machines that can show thoughts leaving a room to show telepathy, wibbling, mind to mind. Mind to mind communication is called wibbling and, and wibblery. Wibblery is just a set of words to describe how you would communicate no matter what form you take. So you can, I mean, I can communicate with my dog mentally. He lets me know what he wants. Okay. We also have language, wibbleizing. We, we utter an utterance is, is Bakhtin, a great, great Mikhail Bakhtin who went to prison and stuff like that for his beliefs and his writings, which amongst other things said the mere utterance of one man or woman to another can change the course of their lifetime. Now, when you're rewriting and communism was restructuring language so they could go ahead and use language the way they needed to go ahead and get the people to do what they wanted to do based on what the old use of the language was. Such as we're experiencing something like that in the United States now called Orwellian language change. You know what that means, don't you? That means that... Oh, my traffic's been cut back now, by the way. And so this is now just so that you can take pause come back later and watch some more. You're looking at a digital image, a max headroom. I say this all the time. You're not going to hurt my feelings if you have to take a break. I try to get on this, get a roll, get done, and get out of here, but sometimes it takes a while. So just pause it. I'm not going to get offended. But the idea is ultimately try to get the whole thing, the whole idea, because if you put all these pieces together and you stack them all up, I've been trying to get people the parts of the puzzle. Go out and salvage all the materials you want right there. Now we're offering them up. You can get all the materials you need. No interest. Just pay me over five years for what you use for a house. If you build it, make it something and sell it. Doghouse, cat house, bird house, chicken coops, playhouses, whatever you make out of salvage. I'll supply the salvage. You build it. You sell it. You pay me for the salvage. You may make four times as much on your labor and creativity than the salvage costs. That's the idea. I think the most expensive house I ever sold was a 12 by 30 maybe, two stories for $160,000 with the porches. Very pretty, very expensive because we had a lot of handiwork to it. Beautiful pieces. Um, we used antlers, deer antlers and elk antlers. She supplied for railing for the second floor. That was called uh, Vesper Casa, one of my favorite creations. We did a number of them and each one's unique. I didn't make the same thing really twice. The only one I made a second time was the mascot which is the little red one out in the front, the little red log cabin that most of the pioneers came to Texas. They built that little tiny thing and they lived in that till mama came. Then it got bigger. Then baby came and it got bigger. And you got the multi-generational house, which is what I used to take apart. You see the first house, second house, third house. Now, what's important is you can do the same thing. You start with a tiny house. You need another one. Don't add it onto the main one. Separate it. Why? It's a loophole. If they're under 400 square foot, they're not houses. So put your master suite out in the back like I did. I don't need another bathroom out there. I got a porta potty. In Texas, if there's no running water to it, you can have a porta potty instead of a septic system. So you just carry your water out there and drink it, and you got your little potty if you need it, and if you want to, come back up to the front where the shower is and everything. It's a bedroom. Very nice one. If you haven't seen that, it's called the Tantra. Um, I've made a lot of really cool houses, and they range from here from 67 to 80 square feet, and those people. From all over the world come to stay in those that are here. It's called the Ginger Swan. It's 80 square feet. The Kid is 767 square feet. And that was made out of three wall sections. So I learned finally, instead of taking all this apart, pull the flooring off, lose 70%, all the labor, we just cut out the whole floor of the bedroom, pick it up, and then take it over and use it again. And then take a wall and use it for a wall again. Just cut out sections of the wall. Because a lot of those walls were tongue and groove down in Texas. Or there were wood on both sides. So you had siding on one side, a hollow, and wood. You don't need to put it up that way. You can take the siding off one side, put insulation on, also things, but it keeps you from having to destroy the wood on the other side. The ultimate issue when you build a house and try to transport it turned out to be cost. $15,000 to transport a box of air. I don't recommend anybody do that because if you happen to drop that box of air on somebody on the way because something happens and that house crushes them, 
and they die. Well, in some states, you can go to jail for the rest of your life for negligent homicide if you don't have enough insurance money to buy your way out. Now, if you're rich, that probably won't happen. But if you're just a poor guy trying to do this on the side and you just screwed up and didn't do something right, and what's right? Well, that's the jury that's looking at the crippled person that you're about to go ahead and work for for the rest of your life because you didn't do something and somebody else hit the brakes and the thing slid off. Now, I got out of the business because the second to the last trip, I almost killed me. If you remember the uh, heaven on the Blanco delivery, when the truck slid for 15 feet down the side of the hill, which was literally this steep, because the trailer, when it finally went over and got his tires again, it slid and the truck locked up and he slid. And at the bottom, right before he almost hit me, I could have touched his bumper. He turned to the side and went past me before he hit the tree and that jammed up and stopped the truck. And then we spent the next hour and a half getting that straight. That's so we get the rest of the way down the hill to where we had a 65 ton crane waiting for us and luckily didn't spill over and block him in for the next week after it killed me. That would have been bad enough, but I almost dropped it on the owner at the next last delivery of my Texas tiny <laughs> career. Um, so what I recommend now is there's other ways to do this. And I recommend building it in sections, taking it out there. I recommend a whole bunch of things. But there's a certain point at which it doesn't make sense to take the risk if you've got the trailer, if you've got the drivers, if you've got the insurance, if you've got the people in the front, in the back. Oh, and if you're taking it from state to state, like we were up to Ohio, and they change from 16 foot to 15 nine on the bridges for your height clearance on your load, which you were permitted at 16 foot when you left Texas. But if you get up there and they change their mind, 15.9 you can't get the house below 15.9.5 you got to sit there on the side of the road and wait for somebody to change their mind or figure out how you're going to as he suggested at the office the permit office cut the top off of the house well, that don't make no sense i just sell it off the trailer yeah it's packaged with the folded down porches and everything the way i did it they actually fold down with barn hinges and then just open up again when you get there and you put the bottom on no i can't do that either Finally, three days later, with the crew sitting in the hotel and then sitting on the side of the road, they let us in to go 32 miles to deliver the house without going under a bridge for that permit. So I don't recommend doing that. We went from Texas to the Badlands of North Dakota. It's $15,000 a house. I'd much rather ship one semi with all the materials up to North Dakota and somebody build three houses up there. So the reason for having pure salvage outposts, pure salvage outposts, so you can say, hey, yeah, somebody can build you something that way up there. You just go ahead and get hold of whoever, because I'm not doing it. It needs to be built locally as much as possible. So these are the lessons in how to stay fit, how to get your body fit. And if possible, more millionaires are made out of trash and salvage than any other business. So if you want to get your financial scenario set, your career set, your family set with jobs that you don't have to pay taxes on because you'll write off all your income on Tools, food, trucks, expenses. Lots of expenses if you want them. And if I can teach you that, then you'll have the time to do that one hour a day on a mat out in front. Take care of your vessel one hour a day. Now, there's a workout or two I did in my 60s. I did a couple of my 60-year-old uh, one, Darby, at 62. I think it's the name of another one on my, my YouTube sites. And you can see how to do the workout in the beginning as I got through my seven years that it took to recharge, rebuild, and youth my, my bent up, broken up body. Uh, Trinity seeing my x-rays, I still have my broken back and spurs. They didn't disappear. It's not like it went away. Um, I still have issues if I don't take care of myself. Um, my musculature is what holds me together. That's what the doctor says when I go into the chiropractor. He says, if it wasn't for what I'm doing, I'd be crippled. I know that. What you learn is the musculature will carry you because your mind can keep the musculature all tensed and tightened and what it needs to be to take the pressure off your joints and off your bones and off your discs and all that kind of stuff. And if you're strong, muscular-wise, and you're fast and agile and you fall, you can catch yourself and not break stuff and get hurt. And if you walk a lot, especially if you ground, you get a circulation, which means your bones and your body stay healthy. And you breathe more, which means you get more oxygen, which means your brain is better and you build better vessels and you build new neural pathways and ganglion and get smarter and better. Instead of dumb down and put me in a box, please. White walls. And oh yeah, could you have a room so I can have some toys to play with? Uh, I'm not ready for that, guys. Are you? So, there's plan A, 
get ready for what? What does getting old mean to you? Well, it means to me now at 65, I might have another 20 years, 30 years. I'm now looking all the time I meet these older guys at 70, 80, 90, like one of my, one of my absolute heroes is Lloyd Kahn. Author of several books, um, the Shelter books of the series, but he's also the author of the book my my one house is on the cover of, um, Tiny Houses, Simple, Simple Homes um, concept. He did a book that is astounding. Lloyd Kahn, I highly recommend that you visit and get. He's oh, he's working on a new one. He had to stop roller. Um, um, excuse me. He had to stop skateboarding in '73. Still rides bike. He's got a motorized bike. He's still out there riding bike. And his wife and he have been holistic and organic since the word came out in the 60s. He was in the, I think, Whole Earth, Mother Earth magazine editors kind of thing. This guy's been around for eternity. And so when he called me up and said, could he put my picture of my house with the double rainbows, the mascot on there, my first house I ever made, it was such an honor. These are now my heroes. At 65, I look at them and go, good. <laughs> He's letting me know what's ahead. I see people at 90. My truest, biggest, bestest hero, and I don't even really know his name. I've just seen him and his wife perform. At 118 years old, he did his Qigong moves, his ritual, his motions, and it was flawless. At 118 years old, you see somebody out there for five minutes doing steps and reaches and bends, and you go, wow. And then his 115-year-old wife gets out there. And this is on TV, you know, filmed, an international event. There's no hokey-pokey CGI. We made it look like that garbage. This is the real world. And his wife does a sword dance. And again, you see five minutes of expertly presented movements flawless with grace she wasn't no spring chicken looking cheerleader and I'll be darned you never would have guessed when she you seen her on the street she could do that but having seen these things now because of the internet because we get to communicate because that's been out there it wasn't censored this is possible. Why am I on here right now using up all this valuable time with somebody? Because if you know it's possible and you know you can do it naturally and then you're saying and the question of this is when is it too late? It's never too late. Never. I see that thing focusing on me and backing off again and seeing my eyes go, oh my God, we gotta focus on his eyes. It's autofocus, guys. My my producer, um, I want to thank them. I want to thank my directors, my lighting people, all those guys that you see in the background standing up and waving at you. Yeah, those are all the people helping. So we're trying to build this um, platform for the book of Wibblery and what, which is all about what Darby ends up doing to go ahead and create tiny houses and the things that this earthworm character called Rubbles with little English racing cap on and the wireframe glasses and the, he's the avatar in the dreams that brings all the stories. I'll have to get some of those drawings up here, won't I? Anyway. Hey, censors, remember, ain't real, it's all fake, it's all fantasy. And if you see these people change and get all sorts of really good in shape, don't blame me and shadow ban me and everything for telling people how to be empowered and stuff like that because I know when I used to do that really do that they just cut my traffic down to bare bones they even just kicked Mike Rowe off I mean he is one of my TV guys I really loved I did an interview with him over here Mike Rowe when he was doing Somebody's Gotta Do It after I mean he was doing you know, Somebody's Gotta Do It that's after It's a Dirty Job then he went on to do a really cool thing on Facebook and they just shut him down guys He's, he's a really clean cut, very sweet, honest person with his mama all the time getting on there. And I'm telling you what, he has a hellaciously good sense of humor. Never poking any negative fun at anybody, kind of like I do. But um, I highly recommend, he's got a new project out. He's got a podcast going. I guess he may even get a show over it. 
But I want to highly recommend Mike Rowe as one of those people to look to to teach you how to do life skills. He's got a really cool nonprofit program I want to recommend too that's designed to go ahead and get more women and people into doing remodels and fixing things up, which is compatible very much with what I want to do about getting people to build things out of house, salvage and stuff. Maybe one day he and I will cross again and he'll get to stay here and, and, and see what we've been able to do. But truly, follow Mike Rowe. And, and, and look at what he's doing now. I just saw him and uh, they had him on Fox talking about how Facebook had just nixed his show. They didn't nix him, but they nixed his show. And he only had two and a half million followers. I mean, obviously he was nothing but good. Why do you take somebody that gives people nothing but hope and good feelings off the air right now when you really need it? So because of that, I can't just be good news. I got to be also, I aggravate people and provoke them and make them mad because they think I'm serious about some stuff when I'm just actually pointing out some stuff that needs to be looked at and reckoned with. Yeah, that living in your van and building as you go, it works good until you get that snow I've been seeing up there. Yeah. And also the other problem is now is, man, if they in some places catch you doing that, they'll stop you dead cold because it doesn't meet code. So... All you guys, please, I'm trying to get materials out there for you to be able to build houses, pay me back down the road with no interest. Um, get to building. Let's get to making this happen. I waited long enough. I've been silent on the side of the road. Crazy man. I'm still a crazy man. That's what they say. I wear that badge proudly. I don't want to be a normie. I'm dang sure not a sheeple. I've been accused of being a conspiracy theorist because I don't believe Kennedy was shot by one boy who just managed to pop a bunch of holes in the car and people and everything else and have that bullet pop out on the gurney. Duh. And if you believe that, by the way, you're going to hate my channel. And you're going to think I'm an absolutely crazy son of a gun because I actually am still waiting for Johnny Boy to pop up. Yeah. I'm a conspiracy theorist. And that only means that I theorize. I actually look at the evidence and I believe that there's times that people get together and make things happen and other people don't know about it. And it's a conspiracy. And that's been around forever. That's why the word is out there. But if you have a conspiracy theorist, it means you make theories. It doesn't mean you can go out and blow somebody up. It doesn't mean you can go out and hurt anybody. I'm actually a very peaceful conspiracy theorist. Um, I've been since I was a kid. That means you sit on the sidelines and watch, look, listen, talk. Nothing else. Katrina, you and many others believe it. There weren't no bodies. Yeah, we already knew what the C company wanted to do. They found the plastic explosives on the plane ahead of time, so they had a counter plan. But like he said, I will expose my dad's murderers. Even if I have to take down the entire government to do it. Why do you say that? He said that because, like he named the magazine... Bush. Actually, George. I'm sorry. Did I make a mistake? <laughs> the killer of his dad was not hidden from certain people. But the trick is, how do you say anything without getting killed, huh? So, friends, I want to tell you this. I believe in the white hats. I believe that just like JFK Jr. predicted Trump would come, I believe he came and he did make presidency just like was predicted by that young man so long ago. I believe that if any man could come back to this planet and lead us to a peaceful resolution, eliminate the military machine, the CIA, like his daddy tried to do, with executive order number 57, that's how few there were. JFK, a Democrat, by the way, I might remember if I'm not mistaken. Executive Order number 57, dissolve the CIA and the FBI and put the shadow government to rest. You ever heard of that before, guys? I have. Guess 
who will undo JFK's executive order number 57. Is not the person that reinstituted it and said, look, there's a problem. No. You know. Do I need to say more? No. Why would I say more? I don't want to get censored with the, the reality stuff. I'm on my story. In my story, book of Wibble Read Wub. Well, there's a lot more in that book, actually, but it can't even be talked about nowadays. It's censored. Isn't that a pity? But for you who are part of my book, did you know it? Yeah, conspiracy analyst. I like that angel. It is analyst, actually. It's a synthesis of information. A synthesis. And it's hard to do if you have a Google brain that basically only takes digital information and fills in the slot. you got to have analog thinking where you go back to memory base and you say, oh, wait a minute, that doesn't correlate. That's called discrimination. The ability to discriminate bullshit from truth. Um, discrimination. And judge. And that's saying, oh, wait a minute, you're full of bullshit. Don't get in my car. Don't you get near me. Get your back. Get back. That's called judgment. I judge that you're going to be a danger to me based on my discriminatory skills. I could discriminate that your eyes were all strange looking, you had tattoos all over your face and rings in your nose and you got a bat in your hand and I can discriminate the difference between good and bad and right now it's a bad thing that you're close to me. In Texas, that's about the time we, you know, lock and load and suggest with great intention they get off our property right now. Luckily, if you stay on your property, you keep those kind of rights. Now, you go off in some place like Washington, D.C. or some place like that, and you start getting crazy and going and attacking somebody. We got 16 different kinds of police over your head. That's plain stupid. Now, I don't think there's a lot of smart people that did that. I think there were some stupid people that got involved, but you know what? They were kind of seduced, induced, reduced to being puppets and pawns, sheeple. We don't need violence instigated by us, anybody, us, that wants peace, us, the we, W-I-I, all the eyes in the world that want peace, still stand for the same principles that Martin Luther King did, peace, that Gandhi did, peace, peace, war is a last resort. My dad went to war. I joined during the war in Vietnam a long time ago. A worthless waste of mankind on both sides. Innocents killed all over the place. There is nothing good to be had from war. Hate. They teach the soldiers to hate. You can't kill somebody you love. You teach people to hate an entire race. I watched my dad come back so filled with hate for people he called slopes, which I didn't even know what the word meant. Or round eyes. Who would know that's an insult? If you're not in that society, who knows what's an insult? what a word means in another language in another place just like love what does love mean to you to me it means giving yourself to somebody else for the benefit of them and you in the world love is a big thing so I want to go ahead and say I'm doing this out of my love, my desire for peace. I would not be getting into this game of suggesting we need a world union of beings separate and apart from the government, separate and apart from religion, beings, all of us. Now, why the virus of wibbly? It is a small set of words that if you're a wubber, if you like the idea of being 
part of a group around the world that wants peace, then you're a wubber. You believe in wub. Wub, a world union of beings. Now, imagine how people think, oh, people are gonna think you're crazy. Yeah, good. Because if they take you seriously, they'll beat your brains out. I don't want to be taken seriously, do you? No. You can laugh at me all you want. I'm not trying to sell you nothing. I'm just simply a writer working on a book about how in a fictional world, fantasy, how does one person light the candles so that they can be that one person that lights more candles that eventually lights up the world, the quantum effect? Gandhi had it. Jesus had it. Buddha had it. And many, many more as do now. Yeah. Those are the legions of light you see all over the place right now with that positive vibe, that message. And you know what? With the internet, if they don't shut it down, guess what? We're all going to get together. Change the world to be a better place. Everybody has their specialty, guys. Some are working on GameStop. What does that mean? Like Wall Street? Are they working on Wall Street? Or are they working to correct their corrections? Oh, man. Thank you. I love you all, too. And that's the idea of it. Is that at some point here, we'll use that word and somebody go, you what? Oh, you love me? Cool. Yeah. If you establish Weblock, guys. Weblock is the bonds that we develop between us, spirit to spirit. Distance has no meaning. Time has no meaning in that level. And it lasts from life to life. If you don't believe in more than one life, well, if you don't believe there's a promised life after this and possibly many more. Remember, they didn't say no reincarnation as per Jesus until 550 years after he died. They had a big meeting of all the kings and the preachers and everybody was going to go ahead and decide how Christianity was going to be treated the next year because they did regularly up in that time. They decide there's no reincarnation because everybody's saying, hey, man, I'm just going to come back. No, no, no. It was one shot and you go to hell. You got to pay us right now or you go to hell. That was 500 years after Jesus left still. But my point is very simple. If you believe you're here for a purpose, you got a soul, you got a God, you got a reason to be here that's good. You want to make it better for your children, for the other kids that come, for the children of the children of the children. Well, that's where I'm at. My son's gone on already. He's on the other side of that little veil separates spirit from physicality, from incarnation. From my little filament being able to put out a green, yes, a green light matrix. That's why I use green lasers to heal. They work very well, green light. And it, that green light matrix, that's what organic matter sticks to and forms this shell. You see this gelatinous body. That's actually a green electrical matrix in the heart chakra is where it starts at. The heart then tells the brain what to do using a sine wave or a spike wave. It tells they either run, jump, hide, or, wow, let's just relax. This is wonderful. That's the sine wave. And then once the brain's been told what to do by the heart, then it goes about its business and makes everything happen. Yeah. The heart, that muscle, if you cut it open, it looks like a rag, just wound up, forms a Gregorian knot, and you're just doing squeeze on a rag, and it lets the water out, you relax it, it takes it in, you squeeze on it, it lets it out. You want that muscle to be strong, because if it's not, you don't get a Gregorian. A Gregorian knot is 60 degrees. That's the heart muscle. And as you get fat and let it get weak, it goes like this, and a heart does not pump like this well. It has to be up like this for the chambers to operate properly. And this is just health. It's walking, it's breathing, it's taking care of yourself and not getting fat on the couch. Not that I'm talking to any of you. Only, my, only healthy people watching this, right? So, please, pay attention. I'm here to exemplify it's possible. According to everything I believed when I was 25, I'd be long dead by now. And if you said, no, you'll be doing splits and... You'll be doing push-ups, and you'll be running, and jumping, and walking five miles a day, barefoot. I said, yeah, uh -huh. you're on some really good acid, because that's what we did when I was a kid. Those are the things you did if you were young, and 16, 17, 18, 19. And trust me, 
<clears throat> everybody. Last thing in the world I'm doing is coming here and talking to you, talking down to you, talking to you like I haven't done wrong in my youth. And I got lots of youth behind me. And I'm not proud of everything I did by any means. I'm ashamed of some of the things I did, but it won't do me any good to go back and feel bad about it. I did it. I'm making up for it. And I'll make up for it till the day I die. I pay for life. That's what it means. Making up for it is I'm, I'm paying as I go. I'm paying forward as far as I can. Be honest. Be truthful. Honor thy vessel so you can help the other people out. Take that oxygen mask. Put it on your face. Otherwise, you're going to leave all those people that are depending on you. Oh, yeah. depend on you. Because you. What happens? What happens? You need to teach them to be independent. You need to prepare everybody in case something happens to you. What are they going to do? Because if you're not taking care of you, well, with what's coming, it ain't going to be pretty. Please, prepare. You prepare before the battle so that you're not tired and can't swing a sword in battle. You don't start preparing as the battle begins. This may be the battle for life, maybe the battle of your career, maybe the battle for your spirit, maybe the battle for your vessel. You think you waited too long, I got a friend. Tom, veteran, Vietnam, Agent Orange, messed up, went on, was a mercenary afterwards because he didn't, didn't like being called a baby killer. So he went out and spent the rest of his career as a mercenary. Good life, but his body, broken back, painkillers for decades without fixing it and then weight a massive amount of weight what do you do at 350 400 pounds right suffering hip replacements you're not dead but he's getting operations and in pain and drugged and, and, and you know is that what you want kids in your 20s you can decide that early when you're 40, 50, the question of this whole thing was, when is it too late? And I'm going to end this finally. It's never too late to start being the example for those behind you, those you care about, those you meet, so they have a chance to change. Trendy is you'll meet and no. know is one of the best examples, leaving multiple sources behind and fibromyalgia and many, many pounds and, and prescriptions all behind to get younger again after being condemned at 48. She is moving in that direction at an incredible rate. Make the decision. While well, you got the time, guys, change is on us. Don't ignore the opportunity to make yourself better, not worse. Because that's what's happening. Depression is rampant. People are beating up their children, their wives, their kids. People are stealing shit. And they're all going crazy. Why? Well, first, honor that vessel. So that you can be clear. Not stressed out. Think clearly. Operate clearly. Not blow out a valve when you're suddenly needed under stress. Think about these things. Alright? I'll put a shirt on next time. I don't wear one most of the year, by the way. That's a beautiful thing about this place. I actually don't have to wear um, a shirt. Um, I know you're supposed to be worried about the sun getting you and all that stuff, but I actually have some skin that really likes it. I get a lot of vitamin D. Why? Because I don't want to get sick. I need vitamin D, don't you? So, oh, good. There's, uh, 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 I'm watching, babe. So she got on Trinity. Um, Trinity's a sweetheart. She runs everything. She runs the B and B. She helps take care of me and do these beautiful braids and all the stuff that she does for me. And, she is an absolute incredible person to watch as she transforms. She's a registered nurse. She comes from a totally different perspective, so it's really good because you can see, mm -hmm, you can see that when she um, was introduced to my way of thinking and healing and acting and being, she was skeptical. I, I think you'll see the difference, but you also have her be able to tell you if you ever come out here. You are the one that's going to change your 
world, your life, your vessel, your children's life. Please, you're never too old. Honor thy vessel. All right, guys. Thanks for coming. Again, I know it's long. Hit the pause button. You won't hurt my feelings. See you later.